Geeks are back, baby. It's fight night. We got the picks. We're going to break it down from the bottom to the top. Let's get into it. First fight of the night is an absolute banger piece. Just like last weekend, they gave us a nice light heavyweight piece. It played out. It was nice. And this one's going to be nice, too. We got Azamat Merzakhanov. Merzakhanov. I butchered that. Versus Tafan Machukwi. These guys are both devastating strikers they're pretty calculated i'd say their stand-ups above average very good uh quick hands for for heavier guys um azamat coming off a great performance he's got a sambo background which is something awesome to have in your back pocket uh tafon still good guy on the ground too just really well-rounded fighter uh it's gonna scare me in the first round of this fight i think tafon's gonna have some serious threats but i just see azamat with more ways to win and I think his hands are dialed. And, like, when this guy moves, it just – this guy seems like he's, like, legit. So I'm, I'm going to sign a ticket on this guy. Uh, Azama, he's 10-0. and 0. I think he goes to 11-0 and 0 this weekend. Um, it's going to be a tough fight. Not a fight I'm throwing a lot of money on, but a fun one indeed. Let's get it going, Goose. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm going to take Azama in this one. I think um... – he showed me enough on the contender series. I like what I saw. You know, you dive into his past in the sport. He's beat good guys. Um, I think he does enough to uh, stay stay outside on and Chuck Wee early, avoid that uh, deadly blow that he's going to be trying to deal out in the first round, and then get into the gas tank and wear on him, possibly get a finish late. But uh, and Chuck Wee's a tough dude, so – no promises, but I'm going to take Ozma. Yeah, going to be a close one. Fishman, break it down. Yeah. So, interesting thing about this one is that I think Ozma, he has a bunch of first round finishes. I think he looks, uh, he finds that one big shot. But with Tafan, he lands a lot of strikes per minute. And I don't know, he knows Ozma's got the power. I feel like if he stays out of trouble, he'll be able to, uh, play the striking game with him and he's the underdog in this and with a dude with pop in his hands and underdog heavier guys uh the other guys making his debut i'm gonna go with tafan on this one all right we're split right there stay tuned to the geek sheet when the official picks come out we got to stay dialed get all the rest of the geeks picks locked in for that one the odds came out Ozmot 175 mishokui plus 145 on to the next fight it's Guido Canetti, and it's Chris Mutino. The green-haired freak is back and ready for some more. Um, I think a lot of money is going to be coming in on him because everyone just thinks he's this crazy dog. Um, he might be. I'm not sold yet. Um, I'm not fully sold on, on the Sugar Show, so that might pay notice to that. Um, I don't think that it's crazy that – that fight happened and he could wear all that damage and all that kind of stuff. I, I didn't think it was mind blowing. Uh, I do think sugar is more of a, a point striker. So I think that Matino, you know, I think he proved he has a good chin obviously, but, but um, nothing too crazy that standed out in that fight to me. I think Guido Canetti's a dog and a half. I think that he's eight and six. He knows he's on the line. Um, I think Canetti just gets this done. Like, I think he just got more, more angles. He's better on the feet in my eyes. I think he's better on the ground. I, I've seen him dominating my boy Cheeto at certain points. Um, I got to take Kennedy in this fight. He's the underdog. I think it's going to be close no matter what, but give me Kennedy with a little bit more fire in his tummy and, uh, and taking down the green haired freak. That's got a little bit too much hype on his name. Got a little bit too big of a paycheck last time out. Uh, Fishman, you go first here. Yeah, this fight, not too impressive from either side. But uh, Chris, like you said, maybe he's got a chin. Maybe O'Malley doesn't hit hard. We don't know. But, um, yeah, basically, I'm going to go with Kennedy on this one. He's got a lot of the, on the line, and he's the underdog. So let's ride with him. He's got a little bit more experience. I mean, seven fights in the UFC. So I'm feeling good about this one. I think he's going to get the dub after a three-fight skid, so let's hope he gets that. 
After a couple sneak disses to the absolute boy, let's send it to Goose. <laughs> I'm going to show some respect to the Sugar Show in this one. I think Moutinho bounces back, fellas. All right, if you ask me how to beat Guido Canetti, I would say make him move backwards, pressure him with some different looks. Um, I, I don't love this one because he is a guy that gets hit versus a power puncher. But I think if he's able to weather that storm early, get him, move him backwards, he's going to get into that gas tank. Just, uh, I did say that about the first fight too, but I feel like this is one where really the skill is going to be um, probably honestly on Guido Gennetti's side, but he's 42 years old. And I'm going to take the younger guy, the guy coming into the UFC, trying to make a name for himself, got a little bit to prove. Um, Give me Moutinho on this one. Yeah, this is going to be a close scrap, to say the least. Let's uh, move on to the next one. It's a uh, middleweight middleweight feud. It's Cody Brundage versus Dalsha Lungiambula. Uh, Lungiambula, 11-3. and three. Brundage, 6-2. and two. Um, I like Brundage's wrestling. I like his pressure in this fight. We were just trying to break this down before the call. It got a little bit scrambled. But uh, – I just think that Cody comes in with a good game plan. He can get the job done. Um, obviously, there's going to be that huge threat that Dalcha can knock him out. But um, as long as he stays true to that pressure, kind of like what we saw Colby do last weekend to Jorge, if he can kind of stick to that solid game plan, and I think he could stay out of a lot of trouble. It does scare me that Dalcha is a great wrestler and that he can stuff a lot of these takedowns. But I just don't see enough on the feet that uh, it really scares me, you know? Um, I don't see it, like, lopsided on the feet. So I like the guy that's got a little bit more wrestling in his pocket. Give me Cody Brundage in this matchup. He's even. Uh, let's toss this one to Goose. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm going to take uh, Brundage in this one. You know, he has a little bit less experience. He hasn't uh, beat that top-tier opponent yet. But the guys that he's lost to, even going back to his amateur career, solid um i think he lost to brian battle and uh another big name in the amateurs and then uh lost to william knight which is uh definitely not a bad l okay, not great either now but he was on a roll and then uh nick maximov and i'm gonna pick brundage based off that fight he brought a good pace uh got out wrestled a little bit but his wrestling skills held up against maximov I'm going to take him because of the wrestling. I think he puts some pressure on him. And uh, we see Dolce fade as these, round goes on, as these rounds go on. So uh, give me Brundage. I think he's a dog in this one. I think it's slight, though. So either way, pretty decent value. Yeah, and I don't think you're, like, the super most confident on that pick like I am either. Uh, definitely, like, a little eerie on that one. But, mm -hmm. uh, Fishman, let's hear it. I'm actually going to go with Dolce on this one. Uh, I think he's got a little more experience, 11-3, and 2-2 two and two in the UFC. But, I mean, he's got knocked out by Ankalaev, main event on this night. And um, that's, his only, that's the only person that's knocked him out. He has five knockouts. And um, what does worry, about, does worry me, Cody Brundage uh, has a couple subs, and Dolce has been subbed before. So, But I'm going to go with Dolce on this one. More experience. Yeah, I mean, his last fight, Dolce, I'm speaking about, uh, with uh, Barry Alt, that was an absolute slugfest. I mean, you got to give it to him. I mean, he really paid us paid us some good good entertainment that night. So uh, shout out Dolce for that last fight. That won't go unnoticed. Uh, let's move on to the next one, though. We got some chicks lining up, Miranda Maverick and Sabina Mazzo. I'm taking Miranda Maverick getting some takedowns in this fight. I'm going to keep it real simple and keep it real quick. Mazo's been taken down her last couple fights. Hasn't looked the best. She is a great striker. Could be interesting if Miranda chooses to keep it there. I don't think she will. Give me Miranda Maverick getting takedowns, a lot of top control in this fight. Maybe a sub. Give me a decision. Let's run it, Fish. I'm going with Miranda Maverick on this one as well. Uh, I think she's going to find the sub on this one, actually. Sabrina Mazo last fight got subbed by uh, Maria Agapova. So, yeah, I'm going with Miranda on this one. I think she's going to get the sub. Goose. 
Yeah, I'm with you guys. Um, I was a little bit hesitant early when I saw how uh, hefty of a favorite she was. But uh, Mazo, her real only weapons in this one are going to be the leg kicks. And that won't even matter if she's on her back, which, uh, you know, you look back at Miranda Maverick's last fight. She got robbed. You know, she won that fight. L's on the scorecard. So uh, I expect her to come out with some fire, try to uh, take this one out of the judge's hands. I'm going to go Miranda Maverick by first round submission. That, that'd be a worthy play because she is minus 335 in this matchup as Mazo comes out plus 250. So not too much value on the money line right there. Try to get a little specific, get a little crafty with it. Let's move on to the next fight. It is a banger. It is a very good competitive matchup between Damon Jackson and Camuela Kirk. This is a featherweight bout. Damon Jackson, 19 and four. Camuela Kirk, 11 and four. We all know Camuela Kirk for his entrance to the UFC when he just jumped in and knocks out uh, Amir Khani, or I guess he was a decision, but it was a beautiful performance. I mean, he came out, he was a huge underdog. Everyone slept on him and he just put on a brilliant performance. So that's what kind of everyone is thinking about him. He's got a full camp this time. Uh, I'm scared in this matchup. I think he's dangerous in a lot of positions. Like this is the kind of guy that you get him on the ground. He's throwing up hella submissions. He's standing up. He's throwing spinning, spinning shit. He's throwing flying knees. This guy's like one of those absolute, you, you can't, you can't, even think about the stuff this guy's going to throw. He doesn't even know what he's thinking. The creative flow is unreal. With that being said, I'm going to take Damon Jackson to just hold him down a little bit in this fight. Um, I am not touching this fight uh, at all with my money, but I think Damon Jackson's just going to be able to nullify a couple things. So give me Damon Jackson by decision, a lot of top control, elbows from the top, nothing too devastating but a good Damon Jackson hard outing where he eats a lot of blows, but gets it done. Goose, what do you think? Yeah. Um, you look at this by pick them even across the board, both guys. Um, and then diving into it, my worries for Cam Kirk would be what you said. I think uh, regardless of takedown defense, sometimes he is accepting of that takedown because he, wants to throw up his submissions. He's got pretty crazy uh, ground game, even off his back. But um, Damon Jackson is not the guy to try and sub from your back. That being said, I think with a full game plan, he comes, or with a full camp, he comes out with a good game plan, uh, really makes an effort to stay on the feet in this one. And I am going to go with Kamala Kirk. I'm going to show some respect to uh, Amir Khani. I think he's a solid uh fighter and to beat him on a short notice uh camp i think uh cam kirk could be the real deal so i'm gonna back him in this one i'm gonna need to see a couple of good good outings from from maquan before i get back on that you know yeah. i feel like he's he's on he's on something right now so he's gonna have to do something for me but i feel you he's shown some crazy things in the past uh fishman what do you got so <clears throat> in this fight damon jackson we got a crafty dude on the ground, like you said. Uh, I think Camuela has got to stay away from that and maybe try to get the job done standing up. But what worries me about Kirk is on the Dana White Contender Series, I believe it's season three, he got knocked out by Billy Quarantillo. So um, I, I like Damon Jackson in this one. His last four fights, he's three and one. His loss was to uh, Ilya Topuria. Um, so... I'm riding with Damon on this one. Yeah, and Ilya Tapuria is an absolute stud, a stallion. I mean, you're going to catch that guy contending for the belt in no time. He fights in the London card. Uh, I think he fights Herbert. That's going to be an absolute banger. Um, he's going to—he's already a big favorite on the lines. So expect big things from Ilya. Don't, don't sleep on the boy Damon Jackson. Don't sleep on him because of his haircut. And he's not that old, you know? Fucking relax, guys. All right, let's go to the next one. Here we go. It is a bantamweight fight. We got Trevin Jones versus Javid Basharat. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know if I said it right, but uh, he's really good. He's 11 and 0. Uh, Trevin Jones, 13 and 7. Trevin Jones, always like a good, good pick. I mean, well rounded, good hands, uh, entertaining fighter. Uh, reminds me of like a, a younger, smaller, midgetized. Um, what's his face? Just fought this weekend. Got the knockout in the main card. Big mouth. Uh, oh, Kevin Holland. Yeah, he's like a little mini big mouth, you know, just like their personas are very similar to me. And uh, I think he does not get the job done in this fight. I think that in the last fight, he showed a lot of gaps in his wrestling and his grappling. And I think that this is the exact guy that's going to be able to expose those kind of things. Don't get me wrong. Trevin Jones, always good for a spectacular knockout. Can't sleep on this guy at any moment. Um, But I think I think Basharat's going to have his number in this fight. Like I've said in the past in a couple other fights, a lot of top control um, with the right game plan. I think he can do it. But like I said, I'm not his coach and I'm not having any influence on this shit. So if he is not having a good game plan, I can easily see Trevin Jones doing some crazy wild stuff. But uh, give me Bosch right in this one. Goose. Yeah, I agree with uh, a lot of what you said. You mentioned Trevin Jones. Good pick. He's my pick in this one. I'm going to take Trevin Jones. Um, And I don't want to say that the Javid is overhyped, but the guy that he beat on the contender series was very overhyped. And that brings me some questions. Um, I liked what I saw. Obviously he went out, had a dominant performance, but um, the guy he fought was 16 and 0 with just absolute scrubs on his record. So um, I know Trevin Jones has been tested. I don't know that uh, his opponent has. So I'm going to take Trevin Jones in this one. Fish, break it down. Yeah. So I'm actually going to go with uh, is it Javid? I don't know, but Basharat, because. I think this dude is dangerous all around, 100% finish rate. He's got five knockouts, six subs, debut, looking to come out hot. And uh, that's why I'm riding with him, 11-0, baby, 100%. Yeah, he hit the gilly last time out, too, so, like, big shout-out for that, man. Geeks love that kind of stuff. Let's get to the next one. It's a girl scrap. It's a flyweight scrap. It's Jillian Robertson versus J.J. Aldrich. Uh, let's see. Can Jillian take her down and submit her? No. No. No, I think, I think JJ wins this fight. I think that, um, anybody that Jillian can't take down and sub, she loses to. And I think that JJ Aldrich falls on the other side. And I think that she's pretty good. 10 and four. Um, more consistent fighter. Give me J.J. Aldrich in this fight. Let's go, Goose. Yeah, I'm uh, do- doing a little bit of final research, as you were saying, that pick. Just wanted to uh, secure personally. My take on this would be a pass. But since uh, we're in the video, I'm going to pick Jillian Robertson. I've seen her face in the UFC octagon more. So, uh I'm going to take Jillian in this one. Fish. Yeah. At first, I I like JJ, but at the end, uh, I just think wrestling is going to be the main factor in this fight. And uh, she's training. She trains at Extreme Couture, and I think she's got this one ground game. Bet it up. Bet it up. We're moving on to the next one. It's a welterweight match. It's Matt Semmelsberger versus AJ Fletcher. All right, AJ Fletcher, a lot of hype on his name, 9-0. and I'm not sure if all that hype's too real. Matt Semmelsberger, 9-3, and has some really good opponents, had some really good outings. I like Matt Semmelsberger in this fight, a more established name, a guy that I can rely on to come out and bang. Um, pretty good defense, only getting better. I can see this guy making big strides. Uh, huge for the weight class, not to mention a uh, guy is bigger than everybody he fights. Uh, be interesting if AJ Fletcher can uh, match up to him in the size game in this one. I don't really see Matt Semmelsberger dropping like a little fly. So 
give me Matt Summelsberger to eat a couple shots in this and and return with some fire. Goosey, what do you got? Yeah, you look at this. Uh, Matthew Semmelsberger, pretty established name in the UFC. Um, maybe not established, but he's on his way up. You know, he's becoming known. And then you have AJ Fletcher, first fight off the contender series. Dana is throwing him to the dogs. And I think he's a dog. Okay. I like AJ Fletcher. He's a big underdog. I'm going to pick AJ Fletcher. All right. There's a little bit of an unknown factor in this. You know, you don't know how he's going to come out against a UFC caliber opponent. But um, I mean, over two to one, I think is worth a shot for me, at least. I'm going to take uh, AJ Fletcher in this one. I think the wrestling is a uh, part of Semmelsberger game, Semmelsberger's game that we haven't seen tested. I think he's stuffed like one takedown in the UFC, and that's the only one that has been attempted. So uh, if he's got a hole in wrestling, AJ Fletcher will expose it. If not, he probably finds the uh, chin in this one. So uh, I'm going to take AJ Fletcher. Fish. Yep. So Semmelsberger, three and one in the UFC. He's got more experience than Fletcher making his debut. But um, Fletcher, I th- just like uh, who was it earlier in the card? Uh, just like Basharat making his debut. I think these dudes are well rounded. Uh, four and they both have. Um, I mean, Fletcher has four subs and four knockouts. Never been finished. He's on a seven finish streak. Three knockouts, four subs, and I uh, loved what he did in the Dana White Contender Series this past uh, fall, and I'm going with the underdog pick, A.J. Fletcher. All right. Let's move on to the next one. That one's going to be a banger. Looks like we're getting some dog prices, some dog shouts. I like that. I like that. All right, the next one. It's the main card. We're starting it. We're getting into it. Bruno Silva, Alex Paella. Holy bully. What a banger. I think Alex Paella knocks his ass out. Uh, give me round one splatter show. I think Bruno Silva, his striking's got ways to go. I think Paella is going to have huge reach advantage in this matchup. I think that he looks already massive for this weight class. If it goes to the mat, he's training with Glover. Give me Paella. I, even if it gets shaky, I think he can even spark him at the end. Um, if Bruno Silva upsets in this fight, I will be very surprised. Goosey, what do you got? Yeah, breaking down this fight, um, typically I like to lean on the guy with more MMA experience, the guy that's been in the cage uh, and been tested more. Uh, That being said, not many guys are coming in the UFC as established in the fight game as Alex Pereira. And uh, going further, you look at Bruno Silva in this one. Three attempted takedowns in the UFC, zero takedown accuracy. I don't think he's going to bring that ground game that you need to beat Alex Pereira. And if you're in a stand-up fight, nobody is more comfortable in a stand-up fight than Alex Pereira. I mean, you could even say that if he was against Izzy Adesanya in there. He's beat him in the kickboxing circuit. So um, I see this being a stand-up fight. I see that playing right into uh, Alex Pereira's wheelhouse, and I am going to take the four-and-one Alex Pereira to get it done in this one. Fish. Yeah, so this dude, is. I've been waiting for this guy to fight ever since he landed that flying knee on uh, Andres uh, Michalides, I believe, but... uh, yeah, this dude is one of the scariest strikers on the planet. I mean, his left hook is probably the most devastating left hook on earth right now. It takes him about six inches to put people face down on the canvas, and it's unreal. I've never seen anything like that. His pop is ridiculous. Kicks are ridiculous. And what's even scarier is kind of like what Hamza is uh, – wrestling dominant person he's going to train at uh tiger muay thai Pereira, he's going to train at tech uh Tech-Shara mma so he's going to develop that ground game and i believe he gets the job done i think he's going to give bruno silva his first knockout loss and 
that's scary to say coming from a dude with uh, 19 knockouts on his record. So, but Alex Pereira, man, look out for this dude and Izzy, man. Come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> Watch out, brother. All right, let's go to the next one. It's a banger. It's Terrence McKinney taking this fight on eight days notice against Drew Dober. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lightweight matchup. This fight would send Terrence McKinney straight into the mix, undoubtedly. The guy's got all first-round finishes. I think it's eight in a row now. Um, that is absurdity. Drew Dober is not a guy that people finish in, in the first round unless their name is uh, Islam. So this one's going to be super, super dope to see how it pans out because I don't really see Terrence McKinney coming out and, and wrestling Drew Dober to the point where he can just hold him down and, like, finish the fight. And I also don't see McKinney being able to really spark him super early unless – I mean, I guess that's what I could see. I feel like that's the only thing I could see. Terrence McKinney sparking him in some in some kind of fashion. But um, Drew Dober's got a chin and a half. So this is going to be a good fight, man. It's going to be interesting to see Terrence McKinney outside of the first round, see what he looks like, see how, see how legit he is. Uh, give me Terrence McKinney. I wasn't impressed with Drew Dober's last performance. I think he could have done a little bit better against Brad to snake that W. I think he just got caught with a couple of shots that were just, you know, he, he could have just – he could have done better, you know, really just made little mistakes. And uh, I think Terrence McKinney's a guy that's going to make you pay for mistakes. He's been in the octagon. He's active. Give me Terrence McKinney first-round knockout. And if he doesn't get the first-round knockout, he'll win a decision, I believe. Uh, let's go, Goose. Yeah, this was a uh, toss-up, especially when you factor in that McKinney's on short notice. Um, but it's, it's not really that short notice because – I guess for the fight, but he's been in shape. You know, he fought, what, two, three weeks ago? Got an early finish, came out unscathed. So uh, I think he keeps it rolling in this one. You know, you got uh, Brad Riddell being able to utilize takedowns and top control to uh, get the win over Drew Dober. I think McKinney is a much better wrestler than Brad Riddell. And uh, – He'll be able to have the hands to stay on the feet early, get Dover gassed out until uh, that point where Dover's takedown defense fades. McKinney starts getting on top. And bold call, but I think McKinney gets the decision win in this one. First one in the uh, MMA career for him. So. Fish. Yeah, so this fight scared me a little bit for Terrence McKinney because I'm a huge Terrence McKinney fan. but. Drew Dober, he's fought some tough dudes, 2021, uh, Brad Riddell, and Islam. And 2020, he had a good 2020 with, uh, I believe, three knockout wins, uh, Polo Reyes, Nasrat Hockfrost, and Alexander Hernandez. So definitely scared me. But then I saw his – he got subbed four times. And Terrence McKinney, I mean, that's right in his wheelhouse. And his, uh, Drew Dober's takedown defense, 55%. So I, I think Terrence will get the job done. And being a plus 200 dog is even better for me. I mean, Terrence McKinney, the boy, five finish streak, four knockouts, one sub two weeks ago against uh, Ferez Zion. And I think he gets the job done. This guy's died twice. God is on his side, bro. This guy was born to win. All right. Let's get on to the next one, baby. Middleweight matchup might be a light heavyweight. I don't know. It's Carl Roberson versus Khalil Roundtree. Talk about a fight I will not touch with a 10-foot rod. This one. Khalil Roundtree, I can never expect what this guy is going to look like. Everyone, everyone talks about like, oh, he's got good this. You know, he's not that bad here. And I'm just like hearing everything and it just goes right out, right out, ear to ear. I mean, I'm never going to bet on Khalil Roundtree. And the problem is that I think he's going to win this fight. So that's that's where I'm at. That means I'm not touching it. So let's go, Goose. Dude, I'm kind of right there with you. Um, I'm looking. <sighs> 
but then he has some good wins, dude. Khalil or uh, Roberson has some good, good wins, man. And you don't know what you're gonna get from Roundtree any night out. He could look like a world beater, and he could look just like an absolute scrub in the octagon. Um, Roberson, he loses to good guys, you know, like elite guys he loses to, guys he should beat. He goes in and he beats. Um, so at the end of the day, it comes down to which round tree shows up. Um, flip a coin, but I'm going to take Roberson. I don't like it, but I'm going to take Roberson. He's shown a little bit more consistency. Um, and at the end of the day, that's all you can count on. So give me Roberson in a fight that I will just be watching for pure entertainment. Yep. Sorry ahead of time for it. Uh, anybody that tuned into this video yeah. to, to get a round tree Roberson inside <laughs> scoop because something tells me fish's scoop isn't going to be too interesting either. Let's hear it. Um, I'm going to ride with Khalil on this one. Underdog pick. Um, I like his. I'm just gonna ride with his performance off his last performance. I mean, you're only as good as your last performance. And uh, but I liked his last performance. Came out an oblique, kicked someone's knee to death, and I felt bad about it. But I mean, whatever gets the job done. But. What scares me, like you guys said, I mean, his last three fights, he's been knocked out twice. So, I mean, I don't know. But underdog pick, who knows? Maybe he'll get that oblique kickoff, end it early, get out of there. You know? Interesting to see how that affects him. You know, like when you like throw it, you never really think it's going to happen. And then it happens and it's like, okay, let's see if he keeps throwing it. Like, let's see like what breed of savage Khalil Roundtree is. If he keeps throwing that kick, Give him some props. Give him some props because that's some fucking wacko shit. All right. Let's move on to the next one. It's a featherweight scrap. The boy, Bruce Lee. Alex Caceres takes the stage again against Sadiq Youssef. Let's go, baby. Youssef's 11 and 2. Caceres 19 and 12. Caceres with all the experience under his belt. Um, I think Caceres gets this done, man. You know, there's something about when the fight was supposed to happen a while ago, right? It falls through. These guys are both rising contenders. These guys are getting offers nonstop all the time. They could pop in probably whenever they're healthy, whenever they feel like. But Caceres was very determined to get this fight back going. He had Sadiq Youssef in his mind. He feels that he's got something that, that I don't know what it is exactly, but, but I know that he knows something. And if, if he's looking like that and he's on this streak right now, give me Bruce Leroy by rear naked choke, sliding to the back like some kind of way you've never seen before in your life, baby. Give me that shit. He's a great dog. He will fight for your money every day of the week. You got to hit him with some clean shots to put him out. This is a dog. Give me Alex Caceres in this fight, baby. Goose, fire me up right now. Yeah. Um, dude, the resurgence, man. You say uh, 19 and 12, the record for Bruce Leroy. He's on about a seven fight run right now, five, at least five. Um, I think he keeps it going, man. There's something about him. There's something about him. He gets in the octagon. He is game. He is, uh, you know, he's truly uh in there to go out on a shield you know he's not he's never going to quit on you he's always going to keep trying to come forward he's going to keep looking for that finish and um I think if he can get Yusef walking backwards he can start beating that front leg up with kicks the game plan opens up for him obviously if uh the power of Yusef which it could be a little bit too much starts moving him backwards, he's going to be in trouble. But um, if he can weather the storm early, stick to the game plan, keep beating up that front leg, I think he makes it tricky enough that he ends up pulling off something. He gets a choke, he gets an arm, something in there, man. Bruce Leroy, he makes it happen. And 
I'm on board with the magic. I'm going to go Bruce Leroy in this one. Yeah, you know, Bruce Leroy, I feel like lately, you know, he's been doing the grappling matches. I feel like he's been relying on his on his ground game. And I feel like that's a really smart thing because he's really nasty on the mat. And if he can just find ways to maneuver this fight to where he's got to get it, I mean, he's the, he's the one that's going to be leading the dance on the ground. And that's what I got to say. I mean, I know Sadiq Yusuf's known to be solid, but I mean, Caceres is just such a good offensive threat. What do you got, Fish? Alex. Bruce Leroy Caceres, baby. I mean, five, five win streak, two subs, three unanimous decisions. And what I love is that in his last, uh, in his last, in the streak that he's on, he's really finding his groove with the striking accuracy. I mean, his last two fights, 80% accuracy, 75% accuracy. So I think he's going to pick them apart. I also love how he's, uh, Southpaw and Sadiq Yusuf is fighting the Orthodox and he might be able to kick the shit out of his leg early. And like you said, I think he's going to get the sub off. And um, this dude's only been knocked out one time in all of his career, 19 and 12. And he's only been finished knocked out one time. So, I mean, this dude is crafty and he's getting the job done. Trust. And he's the underdog at plus 200. So, Let's go. Hashtag trust. All right, next fight. It's a bantamweight scrap. We got Marlon Moraes versus Yadong Song Song Yadong. And boys, this is going to be a scrap and a half for as long as it lasts. Because, you know, Marlon Moraes, the damage that he's taken, the streak that he's on, I know that he's facing these high level opponents, and I get it. It's tough. But you can't lose the way that he's losing consecutively come back out against a guy like Song Yudong and expect a different result. These are just the facts. I mean, Song Yudong, the young, heavy-hitting, confident prospect on the come-up. Kid's going to be coming in dialed as hell. He's a wrestler as well. He's over at Alpha Male. He's getting quality work. This kid's coming to the peak of – Whatever we know him as, he's only like 23 years old and he's literally like molding out to be this incredible prospect. And you're going to have Marlon Moraes, who's going to be this hesitant striker, doesn't know where his chin's at. It's, it's just going to be, it's going to be bad. I mean, Marlon Moraes is really going to have to brainwash himself into a miraculous performance in my eyes. I'm all over Song Yudong in this matchup. I'm sorry, Marlon Moraes. I know you're good, and I know you'll have a good couple chances with the swinging kicks in the beginning, but it's going to be too much, my brother. Goose. Yeah. Um, you look at this fight, especially the five on in, you have Song Yudong, whose career is going like this, and you have Marlon Marais, whose career is going just down, you know? Um, and he comes out and he fights well, like, these are close fights that Marias is in every time against good fighters. And then he gets cracked and it's over and you're sitting there wondering what happened. Um, and he's getting older. He has had some time off. So maybe uh, the chin will heal up a bit, but um, I don't know. I saw he was training out at Tiger Muay Thai and that is a pretty elite gym. Um, my only concern with that is, Muay Thai, more so than any striking, uh, does not use head movement as much. They rely more on that guard. And when you have a chin like Marlon Marais, you got to get that head moving. You can't be taking all those shots. So, uh, you know, I think uh, it's going to be close early. And I think Song Dong finds that button and ends, this, ends his night. I'm, I'm going to guess second round finish for Song Dong in this one. Fish. Yes, sir. Song Yudong. I mean, young, 7-1 and one draw in the UFC. His last four, he's 3-1. And and he lost, uh, the loss was to Kyler Phillips. And he's a dog. So this dude's only been knocked out one time. He has seven knockouts, three subs, never been subbed before. Team alpha male. And like, like you guys said, Marias, I mean, good fighter, but the skid's been rough for him, man. I mean, Sam Hagen, Rob Font, and uh, Marab Dvalishvili. 
So I'm riding with Song Yudong on this, bro. I, I love the way he fights, and I've been a fan. Been a fan. So go. Well, let's get a crack into the main event then, boys. It's uh, Tiago Santos versus Magomed Akaleo. And um, you look at the line, and it definitely makes you think, oh, oh, Santos, got to be worth it. Nah, brother. I think Magomed is going to be as dominant as that line portrays. And I think that Magomed inside the distance needs to be a line on everybody's sheet come Saturday night, courteous of the geeks. Um, I think that that's easy money. I think that Santos has already been exposed for his ground game. I think if he wants to stand with him, he can. If he wants to take it to the mat, he can abuse him. I saw that the sub prop was plus 850. I think that you can get away with throwing dabbles on any kind of finish in this fight because there's going to be a finish. Uh, if it goes to a decision, I'd be mind blown, but I'm all over Magomed in this scrap. Give me Magomed inside the distance. Maybe round two. I go round one though. Goose, what do you got? Yeah, I see domination in this main event, man. They are, uh, they are really asking a lot of Tiago Santos. I think in his prime, Tiago Santos has a puncher's chance. Now, though, I mean, you beat Johnny Walker by decision, dog. You're a power puncher, bud. It's fading, you know, and Mag or, uh, Uncle Live's coming into his own. He he's going to be asking for that title shot with the win here. He's hungry. I think he goes out, beats those legs up that have uh, – no ligaments and in the knees. And uh, I think the leg kicks combined with uh, some swift jabs, straight punches on the feet, whether it's a sub or a knockout, I don't know, but I see it happening within three. So I'm going to go uh, Magomed Ankalaev inside for the main event. Yeah, I'll take a peep at the uh, over under here in a second, but uh, so much hate talk for Johnny Walker. Poor guy, man. Poor guy. Sorry about, sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. I mean, the guy had to post a YouTube video against the trolls. I don't know if he knows he's just throwing coal into the fire, but yeah, that was kind of tragic for him. Uh, Fish. So, Tiago Santos, 14 and 8 in the UFC, his last five fights. So, he knocks out Jan Blakowicz. And he loses to John Jones in a split decision for a belt. And then he gets subbed by Teixeira and whatever the next fight is, Alexander Rakic and Johnny Walker. So trains at ATT. I love that gym. And I'm going with Ankalaev on this one because I think he's going to knock him out. And he's on a seven-win streak, four knockouts. Uncle Ives a dangerous man and a big dangerous man. These are light heavyweights, and I'm, I think he's going to find a knockout. Catch the geek sheet when we drop it on Instagram because that's going to be electric. The th three fights I would look out for, for sure, on this card, Pereira, McKinney, and Caceres. And you could throw Song Yudong in there too, but look out for those fights. In events getting some hate, but – Sneaky good fights on this card. This is definitely going to be one that uh, people are surprised with at the end of the night. Sneaky good card here. Sneaky good.